Okay, playing Dabo. Uh, we'll play in English. We'll mix it up a little bit. How many English opening players are there in chat? Warm up with some puzzles. Oh, it's too late. <laughs> I'm going straight into the game. Opponent going for King's Indian. Um, yeah, as an English player, you kind of have to be prepared for King's Indian. I, I could have maybe delayed D4, but uh, okay, I'll play a line that I learned a while ago. Actually, I played this line for the first time in a really important OTB tournament game against a Wonder Liang back in like 2012 or 2013. That may have been the only time I played this line OTB. Um, but it was a situation I played a Wonder. It was like the last round of a nine round Norm Invitational. And I needed to win. It was a crazy game, but I ended up winning. And that got me my second I am Norm. Uh, so the clear idea here is e5. Not sure if I can prevent e5. Like there's bishop d3, knight e2. Let's go for this. I could also play queen d2, which is maybe a little bit more flexible. And this move prevents h6, so it's nice to have the queen bishop battery. And there's cases where maybe I play bishop e2. Okay, now I guess I can play bishop d3. I can play knight f3. d5 is actually... What was black planning after d5? Because knight, knight e5 walks into f4. And then knight d7... We might get some four pawns attack and push all my my center pawns and my C and F pawns. Uh, so F4, knight D7, knight F3. There is H6, bishop H4. Imagining E6 happens at some point. Let's go for it, though. I'm actually thinking bishop d3 is slightly more accurate here. Ensuring the pawn's defended, keeping options open of knight e2 or knight f3. Thank you, Andrew. Gifting to Efost. Oh, Ajax said, English opening following the footsteps of Ding Loren. Is Ding known for playing English? He's probably very capable of it. He did play a first round of candidates against Nepo. Lost a very tragic game as white. I'm wondering actually if I should just leave my bishop there and let it be taken. Because most of my pawns are on light squares. Knight e2 seems solid. That's e6. And bishop c2. The benefit of bishop c2 is I can play b4. Hey Eric, do you ever worry hey. that your forehead is becoming a five head? Sometimes, yeah. Especially with my receding hairline. But maybe that's a good thing. I don't know. Does it make me smarter? <laughs> oh, I'm having. I'm having trouble deciding whether or not to keep my bishop. Because bishop c2, e6, b4 looks nice. But bishop c2, a5. And then... Knight f3, e6, castle takes, takes. Some eventual knight e4. I'll play bishop c2. Should keep in mind this is rapid chess, so I probably shouldn't be overthinking things. What happened with your heart rate? My Apple Watch is charging. Maybe at some point I'll activate the heart rate. Now F5 looks nice. Or hopefully my heart rate is still happening despite the fact I don't have the monitor. <laughs> uh, play F5. So F5 takes, takes E4 is kind of scary looking. And then G4. 
I'll do it. This game actually reminds me of one of Fabiano's games from a slightly different opening. There was a game Fabiano played where he had, I think, exactly the structure. I actually showed it on stream recently. Uh, he played some rapid tournament in 2019. I was actually there in person. I was playing the same tournament. In the first round game, he played FM Thanks Ezra Chambers. Awesome content. And he, he won a really nice game just grabbing space with the pawns. Thank you, Behavior. Welcome back. Welcome back to everyone. I'm trying to stay somewhat focused here, like trying to not move too slowly. Down about a minute and a half. But I like the position. I think Black should have played e6. Because once g4 comes in, it kind of feels like checkers. <laughs> but it's so nice having like um, just a nice grip. e4 is very well defended. b4 is still an idea too. I should, should have probably considered b4 instead of f5. I was just too focused on uh, this area of the board. So a5 is one expected move. More of a prophylactic move. If a5, I think I'd just play g4 pretty quickly. Black taking time here. How do you know when to push pawns before castling? Yeah, it's hard to give a general principle. I mean, yeah, the king like is kind of airy here. But the fact that no files have opened yet, like generally if if like the center files begin to open or are about to open, then it's usually a good idea to try and castle the king quickly. But given the center has stayed closed closed it's fine to leave the king here um but it does require some more care in the position like there's some weird knight g3 i'm inclined just to play this move i'm realizing bach has an idea of f6 g5 and then completely closing down and then maybe later knight f4. Although knight f4 is not an outpost because g3 potential. So I think I can start with knight f4. Or um, start with knight e2. <laughs> and then let's see what black is up to. I still have b4. Another idea. b4 would force this. The drawback of b4 though, even though it looks good, like I expand with tempo and the knight has to retreat. Uh, it invites a5, and then I have to deal with like the fact I can't really respond with a3. I wouldn't want to play b5. So like b4 and d7, I would need a follow up. I'm not seeing it, so let's just play knight e2. Like if these moves were included and I played knight e2, then there'd be a5. But uh, okay, we might see g5 coming. And things could potentially close down even more. I'm still not sure which side to castle or if I want to leave my king in the center. Yeah, there's still this tension. I don't think it's good for Black to take, though. Rook f7 is unexpected. So I think now. I mean, g4 wins material. I could also start with b4. And black's basically committing. Ah, I see the plan. So black is committing to knight f4, takes, takes rook e7, and then there's counterplay. I mean, I could play like b4 and then e rook b1 or c5. Again, visually it looks really, really nice. I don't think there's that much counterplay either. Let's start with b4. I like the prospect of blocking the bishop. 
Oh, that move I forgot about. But is that really where Black wants to knight? I think just a3. Wow. And now we're going to see knight g7. Oh, that's a funny configuration. I don't think knight f4 is coming. This is, even if the e-file opens, the pawn super solid. So now it's a question how I make progress. I mean, I could play c5 eventually. Not right now. Should be a four. I gotta move a lot quicker too. Let's start with h4. Just creating possibilities of g5. I mean, the general strategy when you are pawn storming is to try and optimize the pieces behind the pawns and then look for the potential pawn break. So like knight g3, queen h2. Black's pretty restricted on the queen side. We might see this move. It'd be funny if we see like c5, b5. <laughs> Everything closes down. And this is turning into a blitz game, so I'm going to have to just move a bit more quick, quickly. Yeah, c6. Um, I think I'll play knight g3. Season. Oh yeah, happy spooky season. I'm trying to spook my opponent with my pawns. Bishop b3 looks enticing. Because there's x-ray vision, and there, there's no potential for c5. I mean, c5, g5, h5, b5, a lot of potential pawn breaks. Wow. Uh, I mean, <laughs> I can't resist. I, I think that's the best move, too. So otherwise, uh, knight would come to c5. So... Now I think I just bond cloud, like king e2, and then bring the rook in. Maybe I could have castle queen side. I mean, there's still a6 potential. It's so funny that uh, the other day, I forget who it was. Someone emailed me of a funny picture of one of their games of um, almost exactly the structure, but it was all interlocked. Like, there is a black pawn in a5. Okay, let's play this. Now, if it closes down completely, then that's not good for me. A black might open the a-file. But there's really no penetration points on the a-file. Like, there's rook a3, but I'll be able to defend. And I'm realizing the bishop should go back to c2, because it's not doing anything on b3. This x-ray vision is meaningless with the pawns here. And on c2, it actually, it does support the f5 pawn. Is that the first capture of the game? I think it is. Okay, I'll take with a pawn. Opponent is trying to spook me with their rooks. The benefit of having the bishop reinforce f5 is that... I can more safely play g5 and not have to worry about losing the f-pawn. And g5 probably just comes. If takes, I have f6. Yeah, this could crumble for black really quickly. Uh, do I play f6 or takes? Both moves look good. f6 takes... Well, let's just take. F6 can't really be stopped. We might see E4. But E4 just, uh, I take and then Knight F6 is a threat. Mm. Yeah, this, this should be really good for white. Wow, opponent's sagging everything now. The cookie is crumbling. I think F6, I don't even need to take the bishop. Because now this, this, and this are all hanging. So I'm up a rook and a bishop. No. I'm up a full rook. Um, and there's probably some funny mate somewhere. King f7. Where's my funny mate? Hmm... Oh, 
Oh no, my queen! Someone call an ambulance. But not for me. <laughs> oh, what a game to start the stream. Also, thank you, Wa Wright, the five gifted. What a funny finish. That was such a nice game on like on many levels. And this game reminded me of like so many different previous life experiences. Hey, and I got a Rosen Trophy for the Pawn Mate. For the Pawn Mate and for Ono oh My Queen, right? Do I get two Rosen Trophies for this game? Rosen score. For those that don't know what Rosen Trophies are, if you go to rosenscorer.com, it redirects to the site um, built by Travlar. And uh, you can input your LeechS username, or you can input my LeechS username, any username, and then analyze. Except let's just do the last six hours. Hey, I got two Rosen trophies. Let's go. <laughs> I wonder if there's a way to see which game I played generated the most Rosen trophies. It's not easy to get two in one game. Let me explain a few details. Wait, let me first show, this is kind of coincidental. Someone emailed me, oh yeah, it was Zippy that emailed me the other day. The subject line of the email was funny position, triple X slam, great wall of pawns. And then Zippy attached this image of this pawn structure. This was two days ago. <laughs> And it's funny that like I could have reached the same structure in this game. Uh, if uh, my opponent, like if my opponent played a5 here, and then let's say I play this, 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 it's the same structure. Where like this is just a draw. Like objectively, there's there's really nothing either side could do. Um, now in this position, actually, White could try and like play bishop c3 and sack on a5. But I think in this position, a5 is just too too well supported. But of course, like I'll never allow the king side to completely close down, because I can always control when files will open with g5 or taking and then using the f file. It's crazy that the engine gives plus seven here with equal material too. It goes to show how much the engine values the space advantage. What was I also talking about? Oh yeah, I wanted to show, um, let me see if I can find it. Fabiano Caruana, Ezra Chambers. So anyway, just uh, look at the opening and look at the pawn structure again. So I, I had the same structure. Like very similar position. In this game, black played knight c6 and knight b8 and then knight a6. And... Yeah, when I played f5, it reminded me of this position when Faviano played f5. So kudos to Faviano for inspiring me and maybe many other chess players too.